One minute ago, seismometers across the Mediterranean began recording something that should be impossible. A single volcano erupting in Sicily, then another in the Aeolian Islands, then tremors beneath a Greek caldera dormant for 40,000 years, then ground uplift west of Naples at a supervolcano that buried Roman towns, all within hours of each other. Is this coincidence, or is Europe's volcanic arc waking as a single interconnected system? What connects these volcanoes beneath thousands of kilometers of crust, and why can't scientists predict what happens next? At 11.24 a.m. local time on June 2, 2025, Mount Etna's southeast crater detonated with a force not seen in over a decade. According to Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, the eruption sent a pyroclastic flow racing into the Valle del Bove, while an ash column punched six kilometers into Sicilian airspace. Lava fountains reached several hundred meters. The aviation color code jumped to red within minutes. But this was only the first warning. Within 18 hours, monitoring stations across the Mediterranean lit up. Stromboli, the lighthouse of the Mediterranean, began ejecting incandescent bombs at rates far exceeding its normal background activity. Volcanoes crater lake temperatures spiked beyond safe thresholds. In Greece, seismometers beneath Nisiros Island recorded swarms of shallow earthquakes, the first significant unrest in over two decades. Something had changed in the deep crust. For a century, volcanologists treated each Mediterranean volcano as an isolated system. Etna erupts because of its own magma chamber. Stromboli's persistent activity feeds from its own plumbing. Santorini's caldera collapses are independent events separated by thousands of years. The standard model held that these volcanoes share a common tectonic cause, the subduction of the African plate beneath Eurasia, but operate independently once magma forms. The events of June 2025 shattered that assumption. Dr. Alessandro Tibaldi, a structural geologist who has spent two decades mapping the Mediterranean's deep crustal architecture, describes what the data now reveals. 20 years of seismic tomography, GPS measurements, and satellite interferometry have exposed a network of strike-slip faults, fracture zones, and magma transfer pathways running beneath the entire arc. These aren't surface features. They are deep lithospheric structures, some extending 150 kilometers into the crust, connecting volcanic systems from the Tyrrhenian Sea to the Aegean Sea. When pressure builds in one part of the network, it redistributes. The concept is radical but increasingly supported by evidence. Seismic imaging shows magma and fluids can move laterally through these deep fracture zones far faster than previously thought. A sudden release of pressure at Etna, where magma broke through to the surface, may have triggered a cascade of stress adjustments across the arc, like squeezing one part of a water balloon and watching the pressure shift everywhere else. But this pattern challenges everything. Mount Etna dominates the eastern coast of Sicily, rising 3,300 meters above the island. It's Europe's tallest and most active volcano, with a documented eruptive history stretching back to 1500 BCE. According to the Smithsonian Institution's Global Volcanism Program, Etna has erupted roughly 200 times since then. Its formation is tied to the collision of the African and Eurasian tectonic plates, where a vertical strike-slip fault beneath the volcano facilitates the rise of magma through 19 kilometers of crust. Etna sits at a critical junction in the Mediterranean's tectonic framework. The volcano straddles the boundary between the subducting Ionian oceanic crust and the overriding Calabrian arc. Its magma storage system is not a single chamber, but a series of interconnected zones embedded in the crust at different depths, the deepest at 11 kilometers below sea level, feeding intermediate reservoirs at 3 to 7 kilometers depth. This complexity makes Etna uniquely sensitive to changes in regional stress. The February 2025 eruptive phase, which began with strombolan activity and transitioned to sustained lava flows, may have primed the system. By June, the pressurized plumbing system was ready to release. When it did, the sudden decompression sent shockwaves not just through the air, but through the crust itself. And the crust was listening. In the farming villages on Etna slopes, families have lived with the volcano for generations. The soil here is among the richest in Europe. Black volcanic ash mixed with centuries of weathering that grows grapes, olives, and citrus in abundance. But the trade-off is constant vigilance. Roads crack, wells dry up overnight, Ashfall blankets orchards after every paroxysm. 
Maria Greco, a third-generation farmer in Lingua Glossa, described the June eruption as different. The ground shook harder than usual, not just once, but in waves like something was traveling beneath us. She's not wrong. That feeling dismissed by some as aftershocks may have been the first sign of pressure redistribution moving through the arc's deep fracture network. GPS stations on Etna's eastern flank recorded horizontal displacements consistent with crustal strain release, movements that didn't stop at the volcano's base but extended outward, towards the coast, and beyond. The Mediterranean volcanic arc is a consequence of subduction, the process by which the dense African oceanic plate dives beneath the lighter Eurasian continental crust. This subduction zone stretches from the Calabrian arc in southern Italy through the Aeolian Islands to the Hellenic arc in Greece. As the sinking slab descends to depths of 120 to 150 kilometers, it releases water and other volatiles, lowering the melting point of the overlying mantle wedge. Magma forms, rises, and erupts. This process has been active for millions of years, building the volcanic arc piece by piece. The Tyrrhenian Sea, the basin between Italy and Sardinia, opened as the slab rolled back, stretching the crust and creating a back arc environment. The same forces shaped the Aegean Sea, where the South Aegean volcanic arc formed as the Hellenic slab retreated southward. But subduction alone doesn't explain synchronization. What seismic imaging now shows is a web of strike slip faults and transfer zones cutting through the extended crust. These structures, formed by differential rates of slab retreat and tearing, create pathways for pressure and fluids to move laterally. When one volcano erupts, it's not just releasing local magma, it's altering the stress field across a region hundreds of kilometers wide. And that stress field includes some of the most dangerous volcanoes in the world. Stromboli has been erupting almost continuously since at least Roman times, its regular explosions visible from ships at night, earning it the nickname Lighthouse of the Mediterranean. The volcano sits in the Aeolian Arc, a chain of volcanic islands off Sicily's northern coast. Its persistent activity, typically 6 to 10 explosions per hour, comes from gas-rich magma rising through shallow conduits. On June 3, 2025, just 15 hours after Etna's major eruption, Stromboli's explosion rate doubled. According to the National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology's weekly reports, the volcano's north crater area began producing medium-intensity explosions at 15 events per hour, ejecting incandescent bombs up to 200 meters above the vents. Thermal cameras detected a spike in lava output, with small lava flows descending the Chiara del Fuoco. Santorini, the caldera volcano in the Aegean Sea, famous for the catastrophic Minoan eruption 3,600 years ago, showed subtle but measurable signs of unrest. Ground deformation sensors detected millimeter-scale uplift in the caldera floor, consistent with deep magma intrusion at 4 to 8 kilometers depth. The changes were small, but they followed the same timeline. But the most shocking response came from Niceros. Niceros is a small volcanic island at the eastern end of the Hellenic Arc, south of Kos. The four-kilometer-wide caldera last erupted in 1888, a phreatic explosion that left steaming craters across the caldera floor. Since then, the volcano has been quiet, aside from a seismic crisis in 1996 to 1998 that caused 14 centimeters of ground uplift and over 1,600 earthquakes, but no eruption. On June 4, 2025, seismic stations on Niceros began recording swarms of shallow earthquakes, depths between 2 and 5 kilometers. By June 6, more than 200 micro-earthquakes had been detected. GPS measurements showed rapid ground deformation, with the caldera floor rising at rates not seen since 1997. Gas emissions from fumaroles inside Stefano's crater surged, and temperatures climbed from 98 degrees Celsius to over 110 degrees Celsius. The timing was undeniable. Seismic tomography, a technique that uses earthquake waves to create a 3D image of the Earth's interior, has revealed a hidden architecture beneath the Mediterranean. Researchers have identified deep crustal fracture networks, strike-slip faults running northeast-southwest, connecting volcanic systems across the arc. These faults act as conduits, not for magma itself in most cases, but for the transfer of stress and pressurized fluids. When Etna erupted, it didn't just empty a local magma chamber, it released pressure that had been building in the regional stress field. 
That pressure redistributed along these deep fractures, reaching Stromboli, Volcano, and eventually Greece. The evidence is in the timing, the seismic waveforms, and the pattern of ground deformation recorded by satellite radar. This is not speculation, it's what the instruments show. Dr. Francesca Funiciello, a geophysicist specializing in volcanic modeling, has run computer simulations of the Mediterranean volcanic network. Her models incorporate 20 years of seismic data, GPS measurements, and volcanic gas emissions. The simulations show that the arc behaves as a coupled system. When one volcano undergoes a major pressure release, the surrounding network adjusts. Small changes in stress can trigger unrest at volcanoes hundreds of kilometers away, especially those already close to critical thresholds. The models also reveal something unsettling. The network is extremely sensitive. A moderate eruption at a large volcano like Etna can destabilize smaller systems with partially pressurized magma chambers. Once destabilized, those systems can erupt with little additional warning. The cascading effect is not instantaneous, it unfolds over days to weeks, but it's measurable and, in hindsight, predictable. But predicting it in real time remains impossible. What came next shocked even the scientists. On June 7th, ground deformation sensors west of Naples detected rapid uplift at Campi Faglei, a super caldera that last erupted in 1538. The uplift, centered beneath the town of Puxuoli, reached rates of 2 centimeters per day, far exceeding background levels. Seismic activity intensified, with hundreds of micro-earthquakes recorded in a single 24-hour period. Gas emissions from the Solfatara Pichirelli fumarole fields surged, and carbon dioxide output climbed past 5,000 tons per day. Campi Faglei is not part of the Tyrrhenian Arc in the traditional sense. It sits on the island mainland, 250 kilometers northwest of Etna, but it's connected to the same tectonic regime. The caldera formed 39,000 years ago in a massive eruption that blanketed the Mediterranean in ash. Since then, the ground has risen and fallen in slow cycles called bradycism, driven by the pressurization of a shallow magma hydrothermal system. The June 2025 unrest was different. It followed the same timeline as the other volcanoes. Over 500,000 people lived directly above the Campi Flagre caldera. Another 3 million inhabit the greater Naples metropolitan area. The caldera's reactivation is not hypothetical. It's an ongoing crisis that has intensified since 2011, with cumulative ground uplift now exceeding 1 meter. Emergency planners have developed evacuation protocols, but the sheer density of the population makes a rapid escape almost impossible. If Campi Flagre were to erupt in a Plinian-scale event, the consequences would be catastrophic. Ash would blanket southern Italy. Pyroclastic flows could reach the outskirts of Naples. The global impacts, disruption of air travel, climate effects from sulfur dioxide, economic shocks, would be felt for years. And the network doesn't stop there. The cascade of volcanic unrest in June 2025 has forced a fundamental rethinking of how scientists monitor and assess volcanic risk. For decades, each volcano had its own observatory, its own hazard models, its own warning thresholds. Etna was watched for Etna's behavior, Santorini for Santorini's. The assumption was that eruptions were local events driven by local magma dynamics. That assumption is no longer tenable. The evidence now supports a network-wide approach. Monitoring must account for interactions between volcanoes, stress transfer through deep crustal structures, and the potential for cascading eruptions. Early warning systems need to integrate data from across the arc, not just individual volcanic centers. When Etna shows signs of a major eruption, observatories in Greece should raise their alert levels. When Campi Flagre inflates, Stromboli should be watched more closely. This paradigm shift is already underway. Research groups in Italy, Greece, and Spain are collaborating to build integrated monitoring networks. Satellite radar interferometry tracks ground deformation across the entire Mediterranean basin. Seismic arrays are being expanded to improve resolution of deep crustal structures. Gas monitoring stations are being added to volcanoes that were previously under-instrumented. But the questions remain unanswered. Scientists know that European volcanoes are interconnected through deep crustal fractures and stress transfer mechanisms. They know that a major eruption at one volcano can trigger unrest at others. 
they know that the Mediterranean arc is more sensitive to cascading effects than previously understood. What they don't know is the full extent of the network. Which volcanoes are most tightly coupled? How much pressure needs to be released at one site to affect another? How long does stress transfer take? Can a small eruption at Stromboli destabilize Santorini, or does it require a massive event like Etna's June paroxysm? They also don't know if the June 2025 unrest was the beginning of a longer eruptive sequence or a brief anomaly that will subside. The data shows the volcanoes are connected. It doesn't show when or if the next eruption will occur. The Mediterranean volcanic arc is not a collection of isolated volcanoes. It is a single, living system, bound by deep faults and shared pressure. When one part of the system moves, the rest responds. The danger is not just in the volcanoes we know are active. It's in the ones that have been quiet for decades, accumulating pressure, waiting for the right trigger. What happens when the next trigger arrives?